All SPM images and images from 3D profilers require a minimum of plane correction or flattening in order to compensate for tilt or vertical drift. In addition, higher order plane correction is frequently used for removing surface form or to compensate for non-planar scanner movement. Even SEM images often require compensation of a brightness gradient across the image, which in SPIP translates into plane correction. In this video, I'll show when to use which correction methods and how to achieve optimum plane correction results using height masking and area masking and using some of the automatic options in SPIP. Tilt is either caused by a misalignment between the surface plane of the sample and the scanner or objective, or due to internal uncompensated misalignment in the scanner causing it to scan in an angle relative to the mechanics. Let's open this file. Using the cross-section profiling tools, it is seen that this scan has a slight tilt in both the X and Y direction. In the plane correction panel on the Modify ribbon tab, there are three push button options Global Leveling, Linewise Leveling, and Zero Background. Global Leveling is used to compensate for small tilt, and this is what we will use for this image. Note that if the tilt is larger than a few degrees, plane correction will induce significant errors in the measured dimensions. Take a look at this rectangular structure here. If we for a moment assume that the scanning probe is a perfect spike, then the red arrows show how the structure is scanned. When subtracting a plane from the scan, we see that the height of the structure is smaller than expected. 2.5 degrees misalignment will give 0.1% error, whereas 8 degrees will give an error of 1%. It is possible to compensate for this using the Z calibration function or the image calculator in SPIP. Drift will cause images to vary in height along the slow scanning axis of an AFM scan. In SPMs without height sensors, piezo creep will have a similar effect. Thermal drift is caused by a thermal expansion and contraction in the mechanical loop of the microscope, which is compensated for by the Z-scanner. In this example, we see the effect of thermal drift. In the topmost image, the drift varies in direction and speed during the scan, causing a random waviness in the Y direction. In the bottom image, we see what often happens when a sample is mounted and scanning started before the system has been allowed to stabilize a decreasing drift speed during the scan. The drift is also observable in the X direction, but it's, it is not as pronounced as in the slow scanning Y direction. Other mechanisms may have a similar effect as thermal drift. This could be swelling or drying of the sample, or curing of any adhesive used for holding the sample. Jumps are most often caused by pickup and release of particles or debris. They can also be caused by electrostatic discharges or instabilities in mechanics, electronics or in the sample. To correct for vertical drift or jumps, we use linewise plane correction. In linewise plane correction, each scan line is corrected individually. Linewise correction is also known as flattening. This is an AFM image of a polished silicon wafer. The cross-section profile shows the height drift along the y-axis. To correct for the drift, we use the linewise leveling option on the Modify ribbon tab. This will fit and subtract a straight line from each scan line in the image. Here is another example. The three push-button options in the plane correction panel are just a small subset of preset methods, or build-ins as we call them. 
A more exhaustive list is found in the Quick Launch drop-down. In order to speed up common workflows, a copy of the Plane Correction Quick Launch button is found on the General Ribbon tab. We will again click on the Linewise Leveling option, but this time from the built-ins group in the Quick Launch drop-down. In some cases, it is necessary to go to second or higher order linewise correction, but I'll usually recommend staying with the first order because higher orders can lead to distortions. In fact, whenever it is possible, I will recommend only to do linewise offsetting, that is, setting the mean height of each scanline to zero. This is not always good enough to compensate for drift, almost always good enough to compensate for tip jumps. Remaining distortions such as tilt or bow can usually be removed using global plane correction either before or after the linewise offsetting. In this example we have an AFM image of a polished steel surface. We see both the trace and the retrace scans and a cross-section from the same place on each image. Trace is left to right. A number of characteristic height jumps can be seen. If we move the cross-section profile down onto the top of the first jump, it is easy to see what has happened. Either a bit of the tip has broken off, or some material has been picked up by the tip and has been released again. The same is seen on the next jump, here on the trace going from left to right. It is not always that we see the jump in a scanline, as they often occur at the turning points all the way to the left or all the way to the right. If we apply line-wise offset correction from the plane correction quick launch menu, we see that we get rid of the steps, at least almost. If we now apply global leveling, the image is almost perfect except for the scan lines with the jumps. There are several ways to correct these lines. The most easy one is to use the streak removal filters. First we remove the white streaks and then the dark streaks. We'll get back to the details of filtering in another video. The zero background method is used to set the background or substrate level to zero in an image. This is particularly useful in relation to particle analysis, where an accurate reference for height measurement is needed in order to measure the heights of particles or depths of pores correctly. Thanks for watching this video. There is, of course, much more to plane correction than described here, but I hope this introduction has been useful.